Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Inside Guns uh, with your host, me, the Yankee Marshal. Today, I want to talk about caliber, specifically what caliber is best for carry. Now, I have actually talked about this before, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I don't remember exactly what I said because it's been a while and my memory ain't what it used to be. So this might be new for both of you. Well, actually, that's not even true, though. My memory is pretty much exactly what it used to be, which is rotten. So, uh, like I said, this might be as much new for me as it is for you when I say this. Because the only way to know what I said before is to go back and watch my own video. And I, bleh, I'm not doing that. Uh, so, uh, I'm going to address the topic again today because I started to read a question in my live chat the other night and then didn't answer it. Kind of went off on a tirade. I don't know. Probably about my favorite uh, ice cream flavor or what color of bunny rabbit is the prettiest. You know, I never know what I'm going to talk about in the live chat. Uh, I get confused sometimes and lose my train of thought. But I started to read a question, didn't answer it. And the question was, what did I think was, I do believe they use the term ultimate, what did I think was the ultimate caliber for self-protection when it comes to your carry guns in both revolvers and semi-autos? Well, I guess it really mean, uh, really de uh, 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 depends on what you mean by ultimate in this situation. I guess you people could take that different ways. Now, I know what my personal favorites are as far as semi-automatics and revolvers uh, are concerned. I know which rounds I think are best. For example, for a revolver, I think 357 Magnum is the best because it's easily available. You can pretty much always find ammo for it. There's pretty much every revolver out there. At least one version of their gun fits 357 Magnum. Uh, it's probably the most common caliber as far as handguns are concerned. And like I say, it's a very potent caliber. It's powerful. It'll handle pretty much any threat you're going to face. I mean, four-legged critters, two-legged critters, no matter what you're going to go up against, 357 Magnum, if you're choosing to carry a revolver, pretty much going to get the job done. I mean, of course, yeah, you might want to carry a 44 mag if you're going somewhere like Bear Country or something. Uh, but even then, you could just... Go to a different bar where there aren't so many bears. Uh, maybe go to the Twinkie factory or something instead. Although I think there's bears there too, but they are there to prey on the Twinks. So I don't think they'll be paying much attention to you unless you're a Twink. But I'm um, getting off the topic here. Uh, I think 357 is just great. It's powerful. will do pretty much anything you want to do. And not only is it easy to find and every gun's chambered in it, but it's controllable. I think most every full-size adult person, I'm not saying your 98-year-old granny or your 8-year-old can handle it uh, reliably, but I think most adult-sized men and women can handle it very easily. And not just adult-sized people. People also like, you know, Clover Tack and Go Shadow. Uh, they can handle them also from what I hear. I don't think I've ever seen it personally, but I, they say they can. So pretty much all adults, let's just say that, that are of sound health, can handle 357 Magnum, but it is at that high end of that, and it's just very potent. So I think it's best for revolvers. Now, what do I think is best for semi-autos? Well, if we're just talking about the caliber, it's 10 millimeter. I think 10 millimeter is right there at that line of being super potent, but not being ridiculous or hard to find. The only problem with 10 millimeter is that it's hard to find guns for 10 millimeter. Not a whole lot of options in semi-automatics. I think there's as many options in revolvers for 10 millimeters as there is in semi-automatics. And the semi-automatics you get are mostly 1911s and uh, SIG P220s. You can get that in double action, single action, or single action only, which would be much more like a 1911. But beyond that, it's like EA Witness and a couple of other like off uh, uh, spectrum guns, you know, like that are outside the normal spectrum of what you would think of when you think of guns. Just not a lot of availability in 10 millimeter. I wish that would change. I wish there'd be more. But since there's not a whole lot of availability in 10 millimeter, even though I do think it is the most potent round that you can get that isn't kind of gimmicky, you know, like something like you have to buy a special slide for and it's harder to find ammo for, etc. cetera. Uh, it's, you know, like I said, getting as far as you want to go without going too far, but it's still controllable and powerful enough to do anything you want to do, but it's hard to find guns that to put it in. So I don't know if I could consider it the ultimate for carry guns, but I do consider it pretty much the ultimate semi-automatic caliber for carry. 
But here's uh, uh, another way to look at it, which one I think is optimal. If I think about which one do I think is the best and just easiest to get, and it's going to be the most conducive to people actually carrying, well, in a 357 Magnum gun, I'm going to still say it's 357 Magnum, but the good thing about a 357 Magnum revolver is you can put 38 specials in it. I will say 98% of the time I take someone to the range. I'm going to say, well, if we take men and women to the range, I'm going to say still 70% of the time they like revolvers. They're simple. They're easy to use. And even if they're someone sensitive to recoil, they can just put 38 specials in them and they'll love it. So I'll stick with the 357 Magnum revolvers and say that the 357 Magnum is still optimal in it because if you're a little sensitive, you can go down to 38 special. But going to semi-autos, uh, because 10 millimeter is so limiting, I don't know if I can call it the optimal carry round. Because to me, I think there's other rounds that are, you know, almost as good, but more available. 40 used to be far more available, and I might say 40 if it was still as available as it used to be in different calibers of guns. But, you know, really what I want to say, I think, is the optimal caliber for carry guns. And I know this is, this is almost painful for me to say. Uh, but I think it's 9mm. I mean, you can get good 9mm rounds. Uh, solid copper. I like the Fort Scotts and the Underwoods. Love them. They perform well. They go through soft body armor even. So they perform very well. And here's the thing. Very easy to control. Very easy to get. Not super expensive to shoot under normal circumstances in normal times. And pretty much every gun manufacturer makes pretty much every model of gun they make in 9mm. Small guns. Easy to carry. Bigger guns. Almost no recoil. There's just a whole gamut of guns there you can have in 9mm to fill pretty much any need you have for them. So I think I might have to say for semi-automatic guns, even though I don't think it's the ultimate caliber, I think it's the most, uh, I guess the word would be versatile and useful caliber because it is available in so many guns. It does have rounds that are going to be capable of doing pretty much anything you want to do. Now, I would not, like I say, want to have to take down a, a, a Mastodon or something with 9mm, but I'm pretty sure I'm not going to run into a Mastodon at the bus station. If I do, I probably have bigger questions and concerns than what caliber am I using, mostly like, why is there a Mastodon at the bus station? But, uh, so like I said, I think... 9mm would be my answer for semi-automatic simply because it can bring so many people in because of all the guns that are available. If you've got people that are recoil sensitive, there's bigger, heavier 9mm that they won't even hardly feel the recoil. If they want something that they can, can deep conceal, there's such tiny guns now that are available in it. So I think I gotta say 9mm. But when it comes to revolvers, I'm gonna stick to 357 Magnum. At least I get to salvage a tiny bit of my manhood there. So I'm going to stick with that. 357 Magnum for revolvers and unfortunately 9mm for semi-autos. All right, everybody, I want to move on now and I want to address a topic that was brought up in the live chat last night. And it may not seem gun related, but I think it's part of the culture right now that I think is working against us in the gun community when it comes to effectively fighting for our rights. And it's that whole distraction culture that I've been talking about. And what I want to talk about, someone asked me, did you see where Newsom says that department stores and places that sell toys will now have to have a gender neutral toy section? Uh, I hadn't seen it until they said it. I looked it up. But I think it's another one of these distractions to get us to where we're worried about that or arguing about that or even making ourselves look bad like, you fuck the trannies or the gender fluid people or, I don't know, there's two genders, you know, to cause those kind of things to make gun owners look bad. But the reality of the situation is, uh, I thought there were no gender specific toys, are there? That's, I mean, aren't you by saying you need to have a, a, a non-gender toy section, aren't you saying that most toys are for one gender or the other? Isn't that kind of contrary to what the left likes to say? So I'm not understanding, this is just my own personal opinion, if gender shouldn't play a role in selecting what toy your child plays with, then why are, do you need a section boys, girls, or gender neutral? I don't think there's a, such a thing as a gender specific toys as far as I'm concerned. If I have granddaughters someday, which I hope I do, uh, and she goes to the toy store and she's like, I want the toy M16 or you know, whatever, toy shotgun, I'll be like, 
hot diggity. Here you go. And if she says, I want the pink one, I'll be like, okay, you can get the pink one. If she said, I want the green one, I'll be like, okay, you can get the green one. If I take my grandson, which I hope to someday have to the store, and he's like, hey, I want that Barbie doll. I'll buy him the fucking Barbie doll. I don't care. I've never understood why people insist on their boys playing with these hypersexual, super muscular toy dolls anyway with the big bulges and everything. Uh, to me, if anything, that's going to make them buy curious at the very least. So, you know, if I, if, if they're going to be uh, uh, rubbing up against one of their toys, wouldn't you rather be a girl doll? I mean, unless you don't care, I and mean, I'm fine with that too. But like I said, I just don't think toys have gender. I remember when I was young, I got one of those Evil Knievel bikes that you crank up and it, boom, takes off. Loved that thing. Played with it all the time. And I'm not, ever, I'm not someone who's ever been confused about my gender or my sexuality or my sex. I don't see how people can really be confused about their sex. There's only two sexes. There's male and there's female. There might be some cross-section somewhere, you know, hermaphroditic, hermaphroditic uh, situations. But there's male and there's female. Uh, gender is a different thing. Gender is just like what society assigns to what boys like, you know, or what boys do. That's gender. So if a boy likes something that's usually assigned to a girl's gender, that would be cross gender. That would be a different type of gender, blah, blah, blah. Gender is just a silly term that I don't even think matters. Because like I say, why should we assign that, ah, that color is just for boys or that color is just for girls or that toy is just for boys? Isn't that the opposite of what we want? Just shouldn't it just be a toy section? And like, here's dolls, here's toy guns, here's remote control cars. And why would there be a label if it's a boy section or a girl section? Like I said, I got that crank thing, uh, uh, Evil Knievel bike when I was a kid. Loved it. I loved, always been boyish, manish. Well, manish. I wouldn't say manly, manish. Uh, never had an issue with my gender. Always was attracted to things boys are generally, as far as society is concerned, drawn towards. Like guns, cars, motorcycles. Although I didn't like to get dirty when I was young. If I got dirty, I came in washed off. That would be considered more of a feminine thing. So everybody crosses gender lines in certain places. Uh, just don't do it behind a dumpster in Denny's. You'll get arrested. Uh, but... It's normal. And like I said, I got that bike, loved it. But my sister, same year, got an Easy Bake Oven. And I swear to you, I played with that Easy Bake Oven as much as I did my motorcycle, my Evil Knievel. Because I loved making the cakes and I loved eating the goddamn cakes. Made my grandmother pick up stuff to make cakes almost every day because I loved them. Uh, my sister hardly ever played with it. She had very little interest in it. She did, I think she put like, made like one or two cakes in it. I fucking used it all the time until the thing burnt out you know, literally melted the plastic. That would be considered a woman's toy, but a girl's toy. I didn't think of it that way. I thought it was the thing that makes cakes. So I just don't think anything should be gender anything as far as toys are concerned. If a little girl likes remote control cars, fine. If a little boy likes a My Pony doll, fine. The world needs bronies anyway. So like I said, in the end, I think it's all meaningless. And that's why, since it is doesn't do anything to further the left's uh, agenda of saying, let's do away with gender, let's stop putting these labels on people, which I am not don't have a problem with, but this doesn't do anything to promote that. In fact, it seems like almost the opposite. To me, it just seems like something they do to make people that they know there's a lot more conservative people in the gun community. It makes them start yelling about trannies and uh, you know how they don't like this and they don't like that and boys should do this and boys should do, girls should do that. And it makes it just look bad. It's just a distraction. It's something to get you angry about something else so that they can point and go, ah, look at the bigots. I don't think it has anything to do with anything other than that. So like I say, I wouldn't worry about these things. I, When you give them this kind of attention, that's exactly what they want. I don't care if stores in California have to have a gender-neutral toy section. Who gives a crap? As far as I'm concerned, all toy sections are gender-neutral. So it doesn't really mean anything. It just seems to me like it's an attempt to make me angry. And I don't think it should work on anybody. Because for one, why should you care? And two, why would we give them that uh, uh, satisfaction of actually getting us riled up over it? Because like I said, in the long run, it doesn't make a bit of difference. It doesn't further their agenda. It doesn't harm our agenda. And it doesn't really mean anything. So the only reason it exists 
is to make people look bad, to distract them from real arguments. And I think we need to stop paying attention to those fake arguments, because like I say, it's distracting us from the things that we really need to be dealing with. All right, everybody, I'm pretty much out of time tonight because I rambled on about both of those subjects there, but there's a couple of things I need to cover before I go. Now, the first one, I don't remember if I covered this yesterday or not. Uh, like I said, once again, not a really great memory. I know I planned on talking about it, whether I actually did, don't know or not. And to know for sure, I'd have to go back and watch yesterday's video. And like I said before, bleh, I'm not doing that. Uh, so what I wanted to bring up to everybody's attention here is that Storm and Norman Gunworks is doing a rifle giveaway for Veterans Day. It's going to be given away to a veteran that is nominated to receive it. All you have to do to nominate a veteran, if you know someone that is in uh, uh, that is a veteran who deserves an extra thank you this Veterans Day by a free rifle, maybe they're involved in their community, they're just a great father, they're whatever. They were an exemplary soldier, they committed you know acts of bravery, whatever. Whatever you think sets them apart, and makes them special, that they deserve a special thank you, uh, nominate them. All you got to do is go over to tympistolproject.com. There's a section there we used to do where it was called Handguns for Heroes. I have opened that back up for now for the nomination process. And it's going to be used for this rifle giveaway from Storm and Norman Gunworks. Uh, and by the way, his logo is at the bottom of the page. If you want to click and email him about anything, you can do that. But like I say, he's given the rifle away. If you know a veteran that deserves it, Go on over to tympistolproject.com, nominate that veteran. We'll draw a name on the 11th, which I do believe the 11th of next month is Veterans Day. We'll do the drawing that day, and maybe the person you nominate can win the rifle. So like I say, if you know a veteran that's deserving, and I'm sure we all do, go over, nominate them for a chance to win a very special thank you from Storm and Norman Gunworks, a free rifle. All right, everybody, I just want to remind everyone out there that we are still doing the Silver Bullet giveaway to benefit Athena's Angels Animal Rescue. If you have not donated yet to where you are in the running for one of the free Silver Bullets, actual live silver rounds, 0.999 pure silver projectile that actually fires, uh, if you're not in the running yet for one, go over to tympistolproject.com, donate to the fundraiser for Athena's Angels Animal Rescue, and for every $5 you donate, you'll get one entry into the next drawing, which will be tonight uh, during the 6 p.m. Pacific Time chat. So you have till 5 p.m. Pacific Time today, the day this video goes live, to enter for tonight's drawing. If you donate after 5 o'clock, you'll be in the next drawing, which will be two days from now. But if you can get a donation in before 5 p.m. tonight, you'll be in tonight's drawing. Uh, so if you want to go over there, like I said, go over to tympistolproject.com, donate $5 or more. For every $5 you enter, you'll get an uh, entry into the drawing for the silver bullets. Uh, we were going to give away five. Looks like we're going to be giving away six now because I screwed up the order which I was supposed to draw. I drew too early the first time. So I'm still going to have a day left after I do the final drawing. So I have to do another drawing. But uh, giving away actual, true, live silver bullets. These are actual 0.99 pure silver projectiles in a live round. You can actually put it in your gun and defend yourself against werewolves with it because it is werewolf season and we're coming up on Halloween week which is the most dangerous time for werewolves because a lot of foreign werewolves are here now celebrating Halloween because it's an American holiday and they're all got the week off work so they're out getting into mischief so you want to be prepared so go over donate to a good cause Athena's Angels Animal Rescue and get yourself a chance to win a silver bullet so that you'll be prepared if a werewolf comes your way this Halloween week. So go on over, register to win, come to the drawing tonight if you register before 5 p.m. today. The drawing will be tonight for that one. If you register after 5 p.m., it'll be two days from now, but there's still a couple of chances to win. So go over, like I said, donate to a good cause and get a chance to win your very own silver bullet. All right, everybody, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you come back again tomorrow. Until then, I just want to sign off as usual by saying, as far as the state of the world today is concerned, you know, it is what it is. It could be a lot worse. A werewolf could come after you, and you could not have a silver bullet to defend yourself. You get eaten by a werewolf. Or even worse, you get turned into one, and then you got to deal with all that flea and tick garbage. So don't let that happen. Uh, but like I said, things could be a lot worse but they could still be better. 
But if we as a community start to ignore the fear mongers, the profiteers, the fake activists, the people who just want to manipulate you, keep you angry so that you don't start asking questions about what progress are you actually making? What are you actually doing to make things better? Uh, if they can't keep you distracted to do that, they don't really have a leg to stand on. So that's what they try to do. Uh, so if we start ignoring those people and keep level heads about us and do the things we need to do to fight for our rights in this country, what things will be in the very near future for people who value the Second Amendment and freedom in general is better. <laughs>